Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, because I'm getting ready to give a, away a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model, uh, thanks to the folks over at Canakit, I thought today we would take a look at unboxing one, uh, getting it set up, and then uh, actually going through and updating the firmware to the newest version so that when the USB version of Raspberry Pi OS comes out, we'll be all set and ready to go to boot from USB. So without spending a whole lot of time uh, with me rambling and going on and, and not saying much of anything, uh, let's go ahead, switch camera angles and actually take a look at unboxing the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model. All right guys, so let's take a look and see what comes in a Canakit Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit. Now of course this is the 8 gig version of the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so this is the newest version that's out and I wanna give a big shout out to Canakit for sending one of these out. And of course, uh, don't forget I am doing a giveaway at the moment to give away exactly one of these kits uh, to one of my subscribers or somebody who has entered the contest uh, for reaching 15,000 subscribers on the channel. So uh, let's go ahead and dig in here. Let's open this up. So first thing that we see uh, is a uh, micro HDMI cable to uh, standard HDMI, so that's good. Uh, that way we can uh, we can plug in our, uh, our Raspberry Pi to a uh, display device. Here we've got a Samsung 32 gig Evo uh, micro SD card. I'm not gonna open that right now, but uh, there we go, there's our SD card. Uh, we got a little uh, fan kit or ca uh, case fan here. A little, I think 20, 30, 30 or 40 millimeter I'm not actually sure, but very, very small. Of course, that'll fit in our case. Uh, here we've got a uh, micro SD card to USB adapter uh, so that we can uh, plug our micro SD card in, put operating systems on it, do that sort of thing. Uh, then we've got, uh, this is actually for our power switch. So we can plug this in uh, one end to our power supply, which we'll cover here in just a second. And uh, then, actually we can just take that out of the paper, or out of the plastic, and then we can plug this other end into our power port, our USB-C port on the Raspberry Pi. So there is that USB-C port, and of course, nice little clicky button there. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look. So uh, on top of our power supply, we've actually got, we can take these off. So here we've got our, our just our, our standard power supply. It's rated at, uh, 5.1 volts at three and a half amps. Uh, so that's what we've got going there. We've also got, if I get it, make it stop sticking to stuff, uh, some heat sinks to go on the Raspberry Pi chips. Uh, we'll cover that here in just a moment. So let's set those aside. Uh, then we've got a Raspberry Pi 4 case. So this one is in black. Uh, the last one they sent me uh, looked exactly like this, but of course it was in white. Um, but this is just a very standard Raspberry Pi 4 case. Uh, I'm actually glad to have this one in black since my 4 gig is in white. It'd be nice to have my 8 gig in black so I can tell them apart very, very easily there. And then of course we've got our, our paperwork quick start guide. Uh, we've got a pinout chart here for the GPIO pins and uh, just a readme first prompt there. So. Now, of course, this is what we're really here for. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model. So uh, I haven't opened this yet, but I've done enough research on these to know that this is gonna look exactly like uh, the four gig kit with the exception of uh, the RAM chip that's in there. Oops, here I am dropping everything. So uh, here we've got the uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 kit here, or Raspberry Pi rather, let's... Uh, uh, let's see if I can get this centered and focused. All right, so yeah, like I said, it looks very, very similar. Uh, in fact, identical, with the exception of the RAM chip that's on here, uh, which I believe is this guy right here. I believe that's our RAM chip. Oops, uh, yeah, so that should be there. Uh, of course, we've got our uh, USB-C uh, power. We've got a couple of uh, micro HDMIs, audio jack, um, four USB-3 ports, uh, of course, two to a USB-3 over here and then two USB 2, full gig uh, LAN port there, GPIO pens. Uh, we've got a camera connector as well as a, a display connector. Uh, and that, oh, and then of course on the bottom, we've got a spot to put our micro, uh, micro SD card. So a uh, pretty standard stuff, uh, looks good. So let's go ahead and uh, put it in the case and uh, get everything set up. But first, uh, let's go ahead 
And uh, let's put these heat sinks on. Like so. And it doesn't matter if they go on, uh, you know, this way or if you tr turn this way, it doesn't matter. As long as it fits uh, on the chip, you should be good to go. Of course, like when you've got a RAM chip that's oblong like this, there's really only one way to put it on. Um, so we'll just kind of go with that. All right, so now we've got all of our heat sinks on. Uh, they are a little crooked, but it doesn't really matter. It'll uh, still do the same job there. And we can go ahead and slide this in like so. Oops. Yeah, I tell you what, let's grab this. Go and put our fan on here as well. And of course, if you're not sure uh, which pins uh, these go on, you can always refer to this chart right here. And let's set it up so that it's uh, the right way there. So here we can see that pins uh, two and four, so this one and this one, are both five volt pins. And then pin six is a ground. So, oops, let's put the ground on there. We'll put this on here, like so, like that. And I want the air to be blowing in, so we'll go ahead and put it in here like this with the sticker side of the fan down. Oops, let's do a little bit of cable management there. Like so. And now we have a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig in its case and ready to go. Okay, so off camera, I've gone ahead and created a micro SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. And I've gone ahead and plugged everything in and right now I'm applying power. So hopefully here in just a second, uh, our screen should give us an indication. Uh, there we go. Uh, so now we're starting to boot up into our Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model. All right, that booted up very, very quickly. I'm really stoked to see that. Um, oh, you know what? I need to plug in a keyboard there. Like so. All right, so here we go. Go ahead and click on there. <clears throat> so obviously all of our Raspberry Pi operating systems, Raspbian OS or Raspberry Pi OS or whatever we want to call it these days, uh, is, is all basically the same. It's all going to look the same. So that's not really what I want to focus on here. Uh, what I want to do first off is make sure that uh, the internet's working, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and open up an internet browser and uh, then we'll just go over here to fast.com and uh, we'll go ahead and make sure. Okay, great. This looks like everything here is working. Uh, we're not really getting the full utilization of my internet here. Uh, normally on my main PC, I would say this closer to uh, 350 to 400, uh, but we're still getting pretty close at, uh, you know, 170. Uh, still nothing to nothing to sneeze at there, so that's working really well. Uh, the next thing I want to do here real quick is actually take a look at uh, what firmware uh, I've got on uh, this device. So uh, let's see if I can't make that text a little bit bigger. Zoom in maybe. Control shift. All right. Hopefully that'll make it easier for you guys to see. I know that's one of the complaints that I get quite a bit on here is it's hard to see my terminal windows. So hopefully those will be a little easier. Um, first thing we want to do is uh, type in uh, VC Gen CMD bootloader underscore version. All right, so this has the March 19th uh, firmware on it. So let's go ahead and do a full update and uh, reinstall or re actually install the newest uh, firmware here. So first thing we've got to do, uh, let's just do a sudo su. Uh, that way we're running everything as sudo. So we'll just say uh, apt update. And of course this will update all of the repositories and that sort of thing to make sure that we've got all of the newest information, okay? So let's, uh, let's do a apt uh, full, oops, full dash upgrade. And let's make sure uh, that everything here is good. Okay, so that's good. So next thing I wanna do is uh, 
take a look um, at uh, CD slash lib slash firmware slash raspberry pi uh, slash bootloader. Hmm. Oh, yep, uh, I spelled firmware wrong. Oops. All right, so CD slash lib slash firmware slash Raspberry Pi slash bootloader. Let's try that. There we go. Now let's do a CD or uh, let's do an LS. So now we've got a, a beta folder, a critical folder, and a stable folder. Uh, let's take a look at the stable folder. Uh, let's say stable, like so, and we'll do an LS. And then here we've got uh, two different um, firmwares that we can look at. The first one, um, right, uh, yeah, this first one here is from April 16th. Uh, we could install that, but let's do the June, yeah, the June 15th version here. Um, the reason I want to pick the June 15th version is because uh, it, it is obviously the newest. It's only 11 days old at this point. Um, but it also has the ability to uh, boot from USB, which is the new feature that they're working on. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, so what we want to do uh, is actually type in a command here. We're going to do sudo rpi eeprom update uh, dash d dash f. And then we'll say uh, pi e prom, yeah, prom dash 2020 dash 06 dash 15 dot b i n. All right, so now it says uh, we're update is pending, please reboot. So we'll say uh, reboot. All right, so now we're back on our desktop. So let's go ahead and come back up to our command prompt, um, and then we'll do, uh, let's zoom way in there. Um, let's see a sudo su, and then what we wanna do is come back to right there, and there we go. Now we are on the June 15th of 2020 version of the firmware for the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so there we go. There is uh, the unboxing and the firmware update of the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model. And uh, I'll, I'll say that at this point, this is kind of the point of the video where I wanted to show uh, booting from the USB and running an operating system on USB and that sort of thing. But um, <clears throat> the operating system isn't quite there yet. They don't have all the right uh, files in there to boot. And so I followed some instructions online and actually made my own uh, bootable USB Raspberry Pi OS uh, USB stick and it worked, but uh, it was super painfully slow. Um, the, the normally uh, a boot uh, when using a micro SD card on one of these devices takes, um, you know, about 30 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds for a full boot or reboot. Um, when I tried to boot it from, or reboot it rather, uh, from, a, uh, from a USB drive on USB 3, using a USB 3 uh, thumb drive, uh, it took about three to three and a half minutes to do a full reboot from the time I clicked reboot until I got back on my desktop where it was usable, uh, was more than three minutes. Uh, so that was kind of a letdown. Uh, also, uh, with uh, I, I also wanted to test, uh, you know, kind of throughput as far as uh, network and, and data throughput, that sort of thing. So uh, I went ahead and jumped over to uh, fast.com, and and here I'll actually show uh, that doing a, a speed test on the USB booted version of the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, it spiked up real quick and then it tanked. Um, and I think that's because the drivers just aren't there yet for uh, full USB capability. Abilities, uh, especially when when it's the operating system, because um, if we look at this other uh, kind of video capture that I did here, uh, you know I get uh, about 200 megs, 170 to 200 megs uh, when I'm doing it uh, when I'm doing the same test using a, uh, a micro SD card. So hopefully uh, with the newer versions of the operating system coming out, uh, they'll make the the, the 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 operating system work better on USB. So we'll just kind of have to hang out and wait for that to happen. But uh, in the meantime. Don't forget to check uh, down in the description where you can uh, find 
find a link for the giveaway that, I, that I'm doing with Canakit. Again, big thanks to them for sponsoring this giveaway. Uh, the channel is about to hit 15,000 subscribers. So they're giving away the kit that I showed in this video. So if you're interested in that and you live in the United States or Canada, definitely check out the link in the description. Go enter the contest and good luck. So I think with all that being said, I think I've covered basically everything I wanted to say in this video. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, you know, while you're down there in the description, clicking on the link uh, for this contest, there are a couple of other links you might wanna check out. Uh, one of those is for coffee, that's a one-time tip jar. If you find my videos helpful, definitely hit that. If you can, if you can't, that's fine as well. Or if you wanna become a patron over on Patreon, uh, there are a few different levels at which you can subscribe. Uh, two of those levels will give you access to a, uh, dis or to a patrons only Discord server. Uh, you know, where we can just kind of hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. So uh, I think with all that being said, going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.